it's great to do your astrology for June 2015. I'm not going to draw a card for you this month. I'm going to go into much more depth in terms of your sign and your chart and in terms of what aspects are occurring and what's really happening in the skies. Okay, so I'm going to do a much more rounded astrology forecast and I'm, I'll, I'll probably be with you a little bit longer this month. So I'm going to get started with the first thing that I think is really significant, which is the full moon on the 2nd of June, and that happens in your 5th house in Sagittarius, okay? So, the full moon is a, is a time when you shine the light on something, when there's real energy, there's real fruition, there's things becoming ripe, okay, and blossoming. Sagittarius is a fire sign, it's really the same element as what you are, so this full moon is really going to give you a, a wanderlust of wanting to get out there to explore, and it's going to kind of energize you into taking action, particularly in the area of romance. So you might go out um, kind of looking for an another person, looking for a partner, looking for someone who excites you, who thrills you, who fills you with, fills your stomach with butterflies and excites you and makes you just, you know, tingle all over, okay. So at the same time, there's a grand cross happening in the chart. And remember 2000, April 2014, there was one of these in the heavens. And it's a time when most people feel really pushed and pulled all over the place. It's a little bit frantic. It's between your romance sector and um, how you can achieve that dream in terms of finding someone um, that you're really excited by and taking practical action. And I think you feel very much like you know what it is you want, what you're looking for. Um, so go out and find that, really. I, I mean, I suggest that you, when these kind of feelings come up, that you go with them and you explore them and you, you see them through, because it, it's happening for a reason. So there's real potential for you to find the structure that you're looking for in terms of your romantic life and to meet that partner. Because why would you have the desire if there was no need for it? Um, a couple of days later, Venus goes into Leo in your first house on the 6th of June and that's right on top of your ascendant okay so you completely encapsulate and embody the goddess of love Venus Aphrodite she represents romance love all of that energy and she's in your sign so she feels or you're gonna feel very comfortable with Venus joining you you're gonna feel extremely passionate extremely sensual you're going to, you know, summer has arrived and it's all those archetypal feelings associated with summer. Um, you know, wearing fewer clothes, running around, having a good time, going swimming at the beach, enjoying life, connecting with people in a loving, fun, harmonious way, going to music festivals in the summer, you know, kissing in the sunshine, in the grass, drinking drinking, I don't know, sangria with straw hats, all of that stuff. And you really encapsulate that because Venus is zero degrees. It's sitting right on top of your ascendant. I always feel that when a new planet goes into a different sign, the first five degrees and the last five degrees are the strongest because it has to adapt to that energy, okay? And it feels incongruous. So Venus has just gone from Cancer, very watery, very slow, very... Um, emotional, even soppy at times, and now it's gone into your sign, which is all about being warm and being generous and being fun, you know, and she's adapting now, and it's almost going to be like you get a wave of euphoria euphoria coming up in you and, and saying, let's have fun, let's do something, let's go out there and enjoy ourselves. Um, Jupiter is in aspect with Mars, there's a sextile between those two, between the 31st of May through until the 11th of June, so two weeks. Jupiter is the planet of good luck and good fortune. It connects with Mars now, the war planet of desire, what it is you want, um, in a really harmonious way, and the two come together. Now, Jupiter is a lucky kind of energy, but you could see it as an old man who kind of sparkles, you know, dust of luck around. And Mars is a young man, he's like a soldier. The two come together and they create quite a powerful masculine energy. And you are really going to go after your dreams and go after what it is you want. You know, the lion is going to be roaring um, now at the beginning of June. And you're going to say, what kind of, what's going to fulfill my dreams? What is it that I want right now? You know, not, not what my grandma wants for me, you know, or what um, my 
mother says I should do. But what do I want to do? What's really going to make me excited? And I just want to remind you that, you know, we all live very busy lives. We have jobs and we have to go to the post office and, and, and sign papers and talk to people. Da, da, da. But we do only get one life. And I know this is so trite, but because everyone says it. But time ticks really quickly. And you can stay in a situation that doesn't serve you for a long time. And before you know it, you look back and you're... You've been in that situation for five, ten years, and it's like, well, what did I want to do? You know, and it's important to really sometimes elbow life out of the way and say, hang on a minute, what about me and what I want? And to really insert yourself into it and get forceful and to get driven. And that's what happens for you. Mars and Jupiter, you know, the two men there, they enter your uh, life with their energy and they say, hey, Leo, what is it that you want? Venus is also in a, in a kind of positive aspect with Saturn at the same time from the 31st of May through until the 12th of June. And Venus, the goddess of love here, um, harmoniously connecting with Saturn, creating real structure and stability within you, within your feelings, an unshakable certainty of what it is you want. You're not going to doubt yourself. And also it opens the possibility to really bring something in your life that's going to have a long-term presence. And that's going to be there for a while. So Saturn is really positive here for you. The exploration side of, some, of, of your feelings is going to bring something in that will then be a permanent long-term fixture in your life. So I completely encourage you to go out and to look. Mercury goes out, comes out of retrograde on the 12th of June. It's in Gemini, in your 11th house. Um, so now kind of cerebral communication is going to become easier. You've been kind of operating from, the, from, the, um, from a much more primitive urge all month. You've just been really passionate and driven. You've been working from your heart area and even from your kind of lower chakras. And now the, the, the thinking side of things comes in and balances you out a little bit. So first half of the month, it's the, this chakra down and now it's up and it becomes a whole picture again. You become much more balanced. And Mercury is very happy being in Gemini. It rules that sign. So communication is going to flow very naturally, very easily. Venus gets involved again, and you can see the um, influence of, of Venus all over this chart this month. She's just everywhere. She's just getting in touch with any, everybody. And she sextiles Mercury between the 8th of June, so I'm taking you back a few days now, um, through until the 13th of June. So that week is when you communicate with love. What do I love? What do I want to communicate? What is it I care about? And you also communicate with love, so you come across in a loving way. You know, you can make a you can make jokes sometimes, and 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 they may be, um, you know, just um, really positive jokes. But sometimes they come across as really mean, and sometimes they come across really loving and kind. It just it's the tone that sometimes you don't even become aware of until you open your mouth and speak. And often speaking can be a good mirror to what you're actually like, because the reactions of other people can often inform you. Oh. So I'm feeling a little bit maybe sarcastic today or a little bit sharp or edgy or whatever. Um, and you'll notice that this week, 8th of June to 13th of June, you communicate with love and people accept that and really respond very well to that. Now, I want to move on to some of the outer planets. Uh, the outer planets move much slower. They're the big hitters of the chart, really, and they, um, their influences are much more generational and heavy. Pluto has been in a square with Uranus since March 2012. A square is an aspect that causes a lot of friction and energy. And Pluto is the planet of rebirth, whereas Uranus is rebellion and kind of unexpected, unpredictable energy. They've been squared, and um, remember the um, kind of doomsday stuff of 2012, 21st of December 2012, world was going to end. These two have been in square since that, and it's almost been um, a desire for something new since then, uh, a search for a new way of being, a new search of operating. 
And for you, that's been about that search, I think, has manifested itself in terms of you finding the work that is really, really your purpose. Um, and to explore different options, different skills, different modalities that then can transform your working life and to put you in a position where you're doing what you're meant to be doing. That kind of comes to an end around um, the 13th of June. It returns later, but this is the first time that energy actually stops. So it's kind of bringing in the new paradigm, you know, since that end of the world doomsday kind of whole energy. A lot of people became much more focused on what am I really here for? You know, the veil was lifted and it wasn't so much like, you know, I'm born the daughter of a butcher and I will be a butcher and my children will be butchers and no one ever thinks about anything. We don't live in times like that anymore. And you specifically, Leo, have been thinking about what is my unique purpose? What do I want? And does that sound familiar? Because at the beginning of the month, you were looking for what you wanted in a personal, physical way. And for the longest time, you've been looking for that in terms of your purpose. And I really feel that you found it because that kind of comes to a close now. And you're much more on board with what you're meant to be doing or what you feel you ought to be doing. And that can only be positive. Saturn moves into Scorpio on the 15th of June and stays there until the 18th of September. I did a video on this. Have a look. Saturn in Sagittarius. It's there for three years. Uh, December 14 to December 17. But now, over the summer, here in June, it retrogrades into Scorpio for three months. And that has an impact because it puts the brakes on um, the the intense Scorpio kind of nature. Scorpio is a sign that can often be very intense. It can be very unsettling. Scorpios can be very overbearing. They can be a little bit scary because they come up to you and they're in your face and they just like twist the emotional knives sometimes. And with Saturn um, now moving into that sign, he puts the brakes on that. And it's almost like he creates some... Um, he puts the scorpion in a glass box, basically. Okay, They're not just running around all over the place, stinging everybody willy-nilly. They're kind of contained, and it causes you emotional structure and peace over the summer. So I don't think that the unseen monsters are going to jump out of your skeleton, out of your closet and, and come and get you. I think uh, the summer is one of lightness, one where you can relax a little bit, where you've done some of the searching work, and now you can just enjoy this time of enjoying some um, emotional peace within your own mind. You know, sometimes we're all over the place and you just can't seem to just get any balance going. This summer is going to be very balanced for you in terms of your feelings. The new moon happens on the 16th of June. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, that happens in your 11th house of people and of hopes and dreams the search continues and you get a second wind in terms of what is it that you're looking for. The new moon is a great time to kind of regroup and to set the intentions for what you want. And that new moon occurs in around your Mars. First of all, Mars sits right in the middle of that. So it's like, what do my primal urges <laughs> want me to do? And that's what you're going to pour your energy into, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that because we are physical we're well, physical beings you know and if you I mean you know if you if you have a need to have sex and you ignore that it's going to come and bite you you have to kind of pay attention to those things and the most healthiest way to have a healthy sex life is to have a partner who you can have a healthy sex life with and to live that and you can only create that by becoming attracted to people and going after it I mean you know that's how it works so that's not something you can just discard um, because sooner or later, if you haven't had sex in two years, you're going to suddenly wake up and say, hey, hang on a minute, I, I need to go out and do this. It's just, a, it's just a human desire. So listen to those messages, seek what you're looking for, and then build a kind of healthy relationship. And I think you can really find that because it opposes Saturn, which creates stability and longevity in your life. So there's real potential for you to find a long-term romantic partner. Okay, Venus again 
elbows her way in and says, hey, look at me, I'm doing something else. She conjuncts the, uh, Jupiter in your first house of self, in Leo, in your sign. Jupiter, the good luck planet, is in your sign. Venus, the goddess of love, is in your sign. They come together, love and good luck. I mean, hello, it, it doesn't get much better than that. And it's all about you, and you can do no wrong. You're confident, people love you this month. You tell funny jokes, you look fabulous, you walk around, people are just... Oh, look, there's the Leo. <laughs> they will love you, okay? You're really um, under a charmed, not just one star, two charmed stars this month, and things are really going your way. At the same time, though, Jupiter trines Uranus, and it's been doing that for a long time. It actually comes out to an end on the 22nd of June. And um, again, the lucky planet connects with the... Um, unreliability and chaos of Uranus in your ninth house of exploration and search and I really think that you find what it is you're looking for in terms of what you want to do for work how you can express yourself in a way that's that's true to who you are you know if I really feel like a psychic but I work as an insurance salesman I'm not going to feel fulfilled in my work and you're going to find a way out of that kind of energy Mars goes into Cancer um, on the 25th and it enters your 12th house of spirituality and other people. And I really feel that you're going to become quite focused on helping others in some way around the 25th. Yeah. And I think you'll, you'll, you'll feel engaged in helping people in some way, whether you become involved in charity or family member needs your support and you seize that. You know, sometimes someone asks you for help and that person becomes completely activated by that. And they, they, they come and rescue you almost. You know, it's, it's that kind of energy and it can be very, very thrilling and motivating. So I, I think you, you take on that energy of the rescuer, of the knight in shining armor or the princess on a white steed galloping out to, to save someone from something. But you really go a little bit overboard with it and you feel that you're someone's savior. And just make sure, by all means you can save people, it's, they will appreciate it. But just make sure that you don't take that person on as your personal responsibility. You can't, you can't take on someone's destiny, you know. You can help people out, but you're never responsible for anyone else's life. We are all responsible for our own lives on planet Earth. We can only do the best we can. So I hope you found that useful. If you'd like a private reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Um, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you want to email me, you can. The address is readings at gregoryscott.co.uk. Have a fabulous June, and I'll speak to you soon.